there's a huge hidden heavenly body right here in our solar system. Evidence is mounting that either a brown dwarf star or a gas giant planet is lurking at the outermost reaches of our solar system, far beyond the planet Pluto. According to the British newspaper, The Independent, the object is four times the size of Jupiter. Experts say the presence of such a massive object could explain why a barrage of comets has been coming from that direction. We'll post Hi, my name is David Morrison. I'm a NASA space scientist, and I want to talk to you very briefly about Nibiru. I'm doing this because I received a note from a 12-year-old girl recently that said she wondered if the video I made two years ago was still valid, that she and her classmates were scared about Nibiru, and could I please explain, from a science point of view, why we know Nibiru is not real and is not a danger. You know, the, the simplest thing to say is just that there is no credible evidence whatever for the existence of Nibiru. Uh, there are no pictures, there's no tracking, there's no astronomical observations. Are we being primed, Gordon, for some major announcement? Well, that's the thing is, now, the Zeta say that the Council of Worlds has told the President, you've got to announce it. I say... Uh, and, uh, you know, everyone I tell that to goes, well, I'll eat my hat if the president ever announced that. But if, if he did, you know, you can speculate that the first thing he would say is Ronald Reagan had an executive order that this is top secret. And every other president signed on. But now I'm going to be the one who's uh, breaking that because everybody has to know. And, and what would he, well, we're coming up to the break. When we come back, yeah. speculate on what you think he would say, Okay. With our special guest, James Gordon James Gianni Noto, and we're talking about Planet X. Now he has uh, sent us some interesting pictures that you should get up to coast to coast am dot com and just take a look at them and uh, make up your own mind. And I'll be back in a moment on coast to coast am. If you need to email me, that's George at coast to coast am dot com. Well, next hour, we'll take your phone calls with Gordon James Gianni Noto as we talk about Planet X. And welcome back to Coast to Coast with Gordon James Gianni Noto. Gordon, let's speculate a little bit on if there's an announcement of this planet. How will it be announced? Well, um, the, there's two lines of thought. One is from the Zetas that the Council of Worlds has told the president that he has to announce it. The other is my line of thought, which is that how can he not announce it? Because as Planet X comes closer and closer to the Earth, eventually it's going to come very close. It's going to be as large as the full moon, and it's going to grab the Great Atlantic Rift and pull it up. And people don't realize that the, the continents are granite, and they float on the magma core. So they're just, they're just floating there. So the Great Atlantic Rift is a line of mountains right down the center of the Atlantic Ocean from... Iceland to Antarctic, and it's and it's there's an upwelling uh, of magma right there, and as the North Pole of Planet X is in line with the Sun, um, as Planet X is in line with the Sun, and the North Pole is pointed at the Earth, um, it's it, every day when the Atlantic Ocean, Ocean faces the Sun, um, the the Atlantic Rift gets pulled down towards Planet X, and then as the Earth continues to turn, it gets released because. When the North Pole of Earth starts going towards the North Pole of Planet X, then it gets pushed back. But um, So eventually what's going to happen is Planet X is going to grab the crust. It's going to be close enough that the crust will stop turning with the core. So nothing changes the core and nothing changes the North Pole of Earth pointing up. But what's going to happen is Planet X is trying to go by, and the day it goes by, it's going to grab the crust and slide it up over the North Pole and then let go of it. And when it lets go of it, the new North Pole is going to be the eastern tip of Brazil, Recife, Brazil. And there's going to be 600-foot tidal waves followed by the tail of Planet X brushing the Earth with all these rocks, which was one of them was um, the, um, the um, uh, meteor over, 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 Russia. Right over Russia. So you're talking catastrophe here. Absolute catastrophe. But the thing is, is that after that, with no governments and no religions and no... Uh, economy, 
the unselfish ETs are going to come and give unspecified help to unselfish survival communities. So, uh, you know, because people say, well, all the nuclear reactors are all on fault all over the world, but, you know, they could transmute the half-life of plutonium from, from 125,000 years to 1.25 seconds. So, um, but they haven't said what they're going to do because we're supposed to be taking some responsibility for ourselves. So, What's the timetable on this? Well, see, that's the thing. There isn't a timetable, and that's that's the number one question everyone asks. Well, when is this going to happen? But the thing is, is it could happen at any time. The only country that's taken any provision is China, which has built these ghost cities. Because um, and remember, I had said that the is southeastern uh, China plate was going to be sinking. Well, Jakarta, Indonesia, parts of it are 85 feet below sea level. Um, that that sinking is is almost uh, 70 percent complete in that tip of the Southeast Asian plate, but all the other um, earth changes have stopped. And I was I was talking to Nancy on the phone. I I said you know that I heard that that these metal boxes were found on the beaches in Oregon and they were vibrating. And I said I think there's extraterrestrial devices. And Nancy started saying. No, I've told you before, there's no extraterrestrial devices on Earth. And all of a sudden, the Zetas broke through Nancy. And speaking through her to me, um, they said, this is absolutely true. And she later wrote about this. And this was, um, you, you remember, uh, people have said, well, there weren't any boxes or it was a hoax or whatever. But it is true. On all the faults of the Earth, there are th tens of thousands of these boxes vibrating. And what they're doing is instead of letting the the movement of the plates because the roiling of the magma deep in the core of the earth is causing these quakes and these other shifts. The north end of South America is going to move to the west. The north end of Africa is going to move to the east. The Atlantic is going to get wider. The Pacific is going to get narrower. So there's all these things. And, and uh, the Zetas had said there was an event calendar, and seven was preliminary earth changes, eight was massive social change, and nine was worldwide volcanoes, earthquakes, and sinkings. And uh, so anyway, these metal boxes have put that off, and the reason why is because they want to have the massive social change. And you can imagine if the president does announce it, of course there's going to be massive social change. Well, if it's going to happen, if it's going to happen, will he announce it? I, to me, it sounds like he's compelled to. Well, that's, that's my thinking is because when, when everybody, when it finally gets separates from the sun far enough that you can see it with your naked eye. Now, I, I've said I've gone out, my wife has gone out, I've got hundreds of pictures of two suns in the sky that I took myself. Now, if I can do that, then anyone can do that. And, um, you know, so there it is. There's this bright glowing area. You're not looking at planet X itself because it's in between the earth and the sun. So it's like trying to photograph the uh, the new moon. You just can't do it. Um, but it's got a 5 million mile long or 10 million mile long. It's really, you know, it's a long tail, twin stranded, stretching towards the Earth because of static electricity. So planet X is not going anywhere. It's sitting there. And the the clump of four planets, the dark twin, Venus, the Earth, and, the, and planet X are still rotating around the sun. But but they're not moving in relation to each other. And the tail is stretched towards the Earth, so that rock that came down over Russia and the other ones that were seen over San Francisco and Cuba and Japan are all from the tail of planet rocks, and there's trillions of them. So this is going to be a big disaster. So when the president announces it, um, you know, and, I mean, I, I'm not sitting in his office uh, privy to whatever they're deciding, but I can tell you this. Um, they really don't want people to, to he, he's not going to use the word Planet X because that's the term that the Zetas have used and that is on Zeta Talk is Planet X. That's panic time, right? So they don't want people to run to Google, do a search, and go, oh, look, there's a woman in Wisconsin who's been in telepathic contact with extraterrestrials because that reveals two things. We're about to have giant disasters, and second of all, there are extraterrestrials who have been telling the truth since 1995. So they don't want to do that. So it's interesting that they started talking about it as Nibiru. So um, 
I, I was talking to Nancy, and she's she's starting to every time she says Planet X, she goes AKA Nibiru or Dash Nibiru or Slash Nibiru, so that if anybody does a Google search on Nibiru, they're still going to come up with Zeta Talk. So he's not he's going to say, look, um, Reagan signed an executive order making it top secret. Every president signed on. But I'm such a humanitarian that I'm telling you that there has been a planet between the Earth and the Sun for nine years, and uh, and 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 why not? I mean, if it separates from the Sun, where every single person on Earth looks up and goes, "Oh my God, what's that?" And the glowing area, the thing that's at the five o'clock position, is the tail, which is sort of transparent, translucent, whatever you want to say, because it's a cloud of dust or red iron oxide dust. It's lit by the Sun. And you can see that from Earth. So that that's what people are taking pictures of, is the tail of Planet X stretching towards the Earth. And you can't see Planet X itself, but at one of these days, when it gets far enough from the sun, you are going to see it. And then at that day, George, don't you think everyone's going to go, the government couldn't tell us there's a planet? Sure, it absolutely. Don't and they're never going to believe another word the government ever says again for no, any reason. not at all. So, all right, six point eight billion people, Gordon, on the planet. How many people may perish? Probably sixty percent are going to die exactly at the moment of pole shift, and another another thirty percent are going to die from disease and starvation and shock. I mean, what the president should be announcing and saying: Listen, you've, we've got to move away from the coastlines. I mean, imagine what a six hundred. Well, and what's the timetable? Okay. Well, that's the thing is, like, there isn't a timetable. There's an event timetable, but the president has been trying to announce it since last September. So, uh, first they tried with the emergency broadcast system. That and, that, uh, that was all screwed. That up. didn't that didn't work. And then, believe it or not, I mean, you know, you think if you're president, you can just announce whatever the hell you want, and no, you can't because there are people, the elite and the rich and the powerful, don't want you to stop going to your job. I mean. If they announce the, tr the whole truth, do you think anyone would show up for their job? Pilots, policemen, firemen, um, truck no, drivers? No, people would want to be with their friends and family. Right, and they'd all head for Wyoming and Montana and places like that, you know, as far away from the coast as they can. And safe havens. Right, and so you can figure out where. Now, I live on a mountaintop in the middle of the Maine coast because Maine was held down by glaciers, and once, and it's slowly rising, so once the crust comes free of the core, it's just going to pop up another 500 feet. So I'll be doing fine with a 600-foot tidal wave. But um, Florida, that's actually going to sink. The U.K., that's going to sink. Japan is going to sink. So a, a lot of places, it isn't just a matter of a 600-foot tidal wave. And then, of course, all the ice in the whole world is in the wrong place, so that's going to melt. So the, the Zeta say the final sea level is going to be 700 feet above present. So the president isn't going to say, What's going to happen? He's go. He's going to say, um, "There's a planet in between the Earth and the Sun, and now I'm, this is what I think." And you know, speculation, because um, you know I'm not privy to the script here. But, um, but uh, you know that he would turn it over to NASA, which would say, "Yes, there's a rogue planet, but we were prohibited by national security." But don't worry about it. Go back to sleep. If anything's going to happen, we'll tell you. And then maybe they turn it over to NOAA, which is saying, well, this huge earth wobble is what's causing all this weather. They're never going to admit that um, that uh, uh, um, global warming and climate change were a lie because can you imagine the lawsuits? It would bring the whole world to a halt because how many hundreds of billions of dollars have been spent on uh, getting, reducing car fossil fuels and, you know, the thing is, is Planet X is roiling the magma, so the magma's circulating closer to the bottom of the crust so the sea floors are warming and the ice is melting from underneath but the actual truth is the arctic just had one of the coldest winters in years and the amount of ice that formed this winter in the arctic is unbelievable antarctica has been gaining ice the top of the himalayas and a lot of these glaciers are gaining ice so this whole global warming thing they're never going to use that phrase again they would rather die than say global warming so um, you know, I don't know how he's going to put it, but my opinion is um, he's got to announce it. And meanwhile, the government is doing all these strange things like ordering 1.2 billion rounds of hollow point ammunition. They're going to arm these uh, Social Security 
um, uh, employees and the National Weather Service employees are all going to be packing with hollow point bullets. I mean, come on, who 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 thinks um, you know that that's normal? What are they expecting? And you know, of course, there's going to be some people who are going to uh, uh, riot and and uh, steal and loot and. Uh, God knows well, things all. things could be out of control. Right, they could be out of control. But yet, if they do announce it, then people will go, "Well, this is something that we're all facing together. Let's work together to save as many people as possible." But they've got to do it sooner than later. Now, I live on a mountaintop. I heat with wood. I've got an outhouse. I'm ready for no electricity and no fuel. Um, you know, I live in a forest. I've got wood all around me. So. You know, my theory is if you're ready for pole shift today, then you're going to be ready for it whenever else you can. But if you if you notice, around the world, the economy has not been getting better, regardless of what they're saying. And people are realizing every day that everything they've worked for all their lives is coming to naught. And hopefully people will say, well, really, what is important? And they'll realize, you know, you, every time you see a disaster, you see people say, well, I lost everything, but, you know, at least we all survived. And, you know, that's what's important, and people are going to start realizing, well, maybe people are more important than possession. But this earth wobble, I mean, I went out last July to take a picture of the full moon rising over the mountain in Maine where I live. And um, when I was in elementary school, we had a target range in the basement. So when I was in the third grade, we had lockers all the way down the hallway, and every guy, every guy in the third grade had his own 22 caliber rifle in an unlocked locker in the hallway, and we all had bullets in our pocket, and we couldn't wait till 3 o'clock to get out. That wouldn't party. happen anymore. <laughs> no, no, and I grew up in the town Jeez. next to Sandy Hook, so, um, you know, but there are, there are people who've decided to be selfish and doing awful things, but the majority of everybody is is, uh, you know, very conscientious. I mean, Maine is second in the nation for guns per person and 49th in gun-related deaths per person. So, you know, just because, you know, so people are legitimately saying, well, wow, I, I got a feeling something's not right. And you see that show, Doomsday Prepper. Is oh, sure, like yeah. People are like, well, you know, the economy isn't coming back. I mean, I was in Walmart the other day. They had 15 people in a five-acre store. And I said to the cashier, I said, you can't even be paying your overhead with this. And then she goes, oh, no, the economy is going to be coming back. Well, okay, fine. You know, that, now they've been hit hard. That's what you say. But um, So I was out there taking pictures of the full moon, and, and I guess probably I learned to have a steady uh, stance with my hands and a camera at an early age. Um, and, uh, you know, I used to win um, NRA uh, sharpshooter awards. And that was, you know, starting in the third grade. I mean, so anyway, I shot two pictures, and the mosquitoes were biting me like crazy. So I wanted to get a good picture of the full moon. And um, so I shot a whole series of pictures, and then I ran inside to get out away from the mosquitoes. And when I was playing them back on my computer, I realized that in two consecutive pictures, I hadn't moved my hands at all. There's, there's a table up on top of the mountain. And there's the full moon. And in the second picture, the moon is moved to the right, not up. Now, if you think about it, everything, the moon, the stars, the sun, all rise in the east, go up to the midheaven, and then set in the west. And here I got two pictures of the moon, and between the two pictures, the moon moves sideways. How'd that happen? Well, that was like, you know, I think the ETs, like I said, I've been in contact with ETs my whole life, and... Um, I think they guided me to do that because that is one of the most remarkable pictures. Now, I've, I've gone out and watched Sirius rising and Orion rising in the east, and then I go back 20 minutes later, and all of a sudden it's like 45 degrees further south, but it isn't any higher in the sky. Now, why would that be? That's because every single day, Planet X pulls the magnetic bar of the Great Atlantic Rift down towards it, and then as the Earth continues to shift and the Atlantic no longer faces the sun, then the North Pole, which doesn't like the North Pole of Planet X, um, pushes the Earth, the North Pole of the Earth back. So you get these wobbles, and what you get is this gigantic loops in the jet stream. So normally the jet stream moves from west to east, 
But now, if you notice these weather maps, you know, and, and why wouldn't you with all these big storms? So everybody's more interested in the weather than ever because it's really can be life or death. And what you get is these giant arcs of cold air coming down from the Arctic. And 30 miles to the east, you've got this giant arc of tropical air coming up from the Caribbean. Um, and you've got this clash of fronts that makes these gigantic storms. I mean, look at Hurricane Sandy. And, you know, if the government told the truth, they should say nobody should rebuild anywhere. But it's just like Katrina and New Orleans. People are saying, well, you know, we, we're going to bring it back, and it's going to be so meaningful, and we're going to have uh, Seaside Heights, New Jersey, ready for the tourist season. And, you know, but the truth is nobody should be there now at all because this is right in the danger zone. They, you know, they should be saying, well, we're going to move anyone that wants to go from the coast. And that's the interesting thing. The Zetas have said even when this is announced, probably only as much as 60%, but no more than that, are going to go, oh, my God, we've got to, to go to safety. And the rest are going to go, well, you know, I really don't want to change anything, so I'm going to keep going to work. And if a tidal wave uh, washes over me, then, then that's it. You know, I'll just die. Well, you know. Okay, you're entitled, that's what this life is like. You're entitled to be a skeptic, you're entitled to be in denial, and you're entitled to die in it, but there's no reason for you to do that. Hold on for a second, Gordon. We're coming back for phone calls with you next on Coast to Coast AM. Indeed, indeed, and we're going to take your phone calls when we come right back on Coast to Coast AM. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. Gordon, are you saying then in our solar system we've got a dark twin to Earth, we've got a burned-out binary star, and we have Planet X? No, the binary star is uh, quite a distance away. Uh, that's why it takes 3,657 years for Planet X to return. So it's something we've never seen because it's burned out, but it is a huge body, and that's where it started. And Evidently, Planet X has been coming here at least 2 billion years, so... Um, you know, it, it wasn't that the Anunnaki were always there. They reached a point where they decided they wanted to powder the gold and put it in their atmosphere to keep the planet a little bit warmer. It's got giant um, hot magma in its core, and it's got water, which has the highest specific heat of any substance in the universe, so it holds heat. It takes longer to heat water than anything in the universe, and, it, and, heat, and water holds heat longer than any. So, But they were getting cold, so that, that's what... That's where the whole quest for gold came from, is from that. And Richard Hoagland has said that, uh, and he's a guest on your show quite often. Quite, quite a bit. Um, he said that Phobos is a spaceship because it's, it's a hollowed out and it's got chambers in it because they use ground-penetrating radar. But actually, the, uh, Phobos is one giant gold nugget, and the Anunnaki, since they came back, have been mining it with robots. That's got to be worth something. Oh, my God. So, uh, you know, but, you know, if you if anybody thinks I'm making this stuff up, I mean, look at, go do a search in Wyoming. Dick Cheney tried to get the Wyoming legislature, and he only failed by a few votes, to buy a used aircraft carrier. Now, what in the hell would Wyoming use? There's no water there, is there? Well, that's the thing is, uh, <laughs> you know, Edgar Casey said that Omaha was going to be the greatest seaport in North America after pole shift, and... Uh, you know, evidently he's planning that the Mississippi will split wide or salt water will go up to the Great Lakes and then uh, up the uh, Missouri and the Platte Rivers and then maybe the Red River. And I guess they were planning to, uh, you know, keep it, um, I don't know, in the Great Lakes or in uh, the Gulf and then fl float it right up to Wyoming. But you can see why he would want that. It's got nuclear power. It's got a hospital. It holds 5,000 people, and he could load it with uh strike uh, fighter strike jets, you know, and be king of the world. And you look at the billionaires around the Earth, they're, they're trying to uh, start their own space programs. But the Council of Worlds has said, no, nobody's going to leave Earth and come back as kings of the Earth afterwards. No, they're all going to have to go through it. And whether you're a billionaire or not, you're going to have to roll up your sleeves. So, the, you know, they, you've heard of the idea of these deep underground bunkers everybody was going to head to. Yeah. But, um, you know, how, how well are they going to survive in, in 10 plus power earthquakes? So they're not. And, but then, you know, after pole shift, at the, mo at the hour of pole shift, when the tidal waves start, then 
everyone's going to, after that, there won't be any earthquakes, so people are going to want to be underground because how are you going to survive this fall of rocks? Okay, let's go to the phones. You to vote on the news, and here's the winner. There's a huge, hidden, heavenly body right here in our solar system. Evidence is mounting that either a brown dwarf star or a gas giant planet is lurking at the outermost reaches of our solar system, far beyond the planet Pluto. According to the British newspaper, The Independent, the object is four times the size of Jupiter. Experts say the presence of such a massive object could explain why a barrage of comets has been coming from that direction. We'll post Planet X is a very controversial subject, but when we study it, we find that it may hold answers to some of life's most perplexing questions. Everything from evolution to how we came about as a species to current Earth changes and what might lie ahead for us in the future. My name is Robert Sepper, and this video is my attempt to explain some of these mysteries. To understand everything thoroughly, we must start from our past. As you do research on our mitochondrial DNA, you find that it goes back into the range of 150,000 years based on the mitochondrial DNA, which is, I, I think, pretty much incontrovertible. If we're 150 to 200,000 years old, that throws a huge, gigantic wrench into the establishment position that we evolved from creatures that were walking upright approximately four million years ago. The early Australopithecines, Lucy, everyone is familiar with her at around 3.2 to 3.5 million years ago, and they're finding new ones all the time. And all they say is to qualify as human is to be upright walking. If you're an upright walking pre, you know, pre-creature, you're called a pre-human. Even though all of those creatures, right through Neanderthal, from, from Lucy at four million years ago, right through the Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Neanderthal to Cro-Magnon, right up to Cro-Magnon, all of those creatures don't look anything like human beings as we are today. They, they are as different from us as primates. In fact, they look like primates. They look like upright walking primates. Up through Neanderthal, back to Lucy, and whatever's going to come before her. What could make something change so radically, literally overnight, in anthropological terms, and be anything remotely associated with Darwinism? I believe, personally, that the writings of the Sumerians 4,000 years ago, as chronicled by Zechariah Sitchin in his books, The Earth Chronicles, I believe that is the most logical and reasonable explanation that there is for how we came to be. Twenty some odd years ago, Zechariah Sitchin wrote The Twelfth Planet. In The Twelfth Planet, he describes ancient writings and texts by the Sumerians depicting a 3,600-year orbit of Nibiru. But the Sumerians are rarely spoken about in history books. Who were the Sumerians? And what could an ancient civilization possibly know about how we came to be? We only hear about like the Egyptians or the Mayans or the Incans, Romans, Greeks. The first culture we have on Earth were the Sumerians and they showed up 6,000 years ago where modern-day Iraq is. It's right between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. It was then known as Mesopotamia, Babylon, but also Sumeria, where the first culture on earth stems. And they have left us over 100 of the, of the first for high society to take place. For instance, stemming from Sumeria 6,000 years ago, they were the first ones to invent writing. They had a system of over 400 characters, known, known as cuneiform text, then use a wedge-shaped stylus or an object with a wedge and would twist and turn and make all these characters that came up to about 400 characters and they had their own complete language like an alphabet that we use today A through Z but this stemmed out of Sumeria 6,000 years ago and all of the first for high society come from them time, the calendar, math, 
schools, courts, judges, systems of law, all of this originate, originated in Sumeria, which was then known as uh, Mesopotamia, Babylon, today's modern-day Iraq. The Sumerians are actually probably the most influential culture of the ancient world. Not the Egyptians, not the Greeks, not the Romans, the Sumerians. The Sumerians invented, for example, the zodiac. All of the the symbols that we still have today for the zodiac were created by the Sumerians. They tell an incredible story, the Sumerians do, of the Anunnaki, which is that there is another planet in our solar system, that gods, super beings, live on this planet, that these beings come to Earth. The Sumerians had a pantheon of gods, but it was living gods. They were The, the, the Sumerians worshipped living gods who lived and worked and, and, and had their lives among them. They were the Anunnaki. Among those Anunnaki, there were 12 leaders, 12 super gods, the bosses, the boss of bosses. Those 12 gods come down and are present in the Egyptian culture, in the Greek culture, and in the Roman culture. They just have different names, but they have basically the same personalities and the same functions. So it, it isn't that mythology begins with the Egyptians, the Greeks, and the Romans. Mythology begins with the Sumerians. Monotheism didn't kick in until the gods, the multiple gods, actually physically left. When we look at all the stories in the Bible about how uh, God is a feared God, and you know, if you do what God tells you, you, you are uh, given the, the reprisal of going to heaven, or if you do wrong, you, you go to hell, you know, and it's very black and white. But the Sumerians give us a lot more context into that line of thinking and how it came about in their image and after their likeness. The Anunnaki quoted to the Sumerians as saying, we have created you in our image and after our likeness, and we were their slaves, basically, to do uh, as they did it. You know, uh, mine, mine the gold, uh, do their daily chores. Uh, we were basically their slaves. The leader said, we'll make you a slave. We'll make you a servant. And that's the reason the impetus, according again to the Sumerian writings, for the creation of human beings. The story of Noah is a classic that comes right out of the Sumerian texts. The word Eden, the Anunnaki called the land where they lived the Eden. Eden. Um, the Adam, they called the, the uh, worker slave that they created the Adamu, plural. Could the Anunnaki have genetically engineered humans? It sounds incredible until we consider that we ourselves genetically engineer the fruit and vegetables we eat every day. From tomatoes to apples and oranges to cloning Dolly the sheep. If we can genetically manipulate DNA, then who's to say that we weren't created or our DNA wasn't tampered with by another race of beings in the past? Now the question is, were we? Did they? And if we were, there must be some empirical evidence, some clues left behind besides writing in a text that points to this. If you look at the human genome, you'll see that it looks very much like a primate genome, except the second and third chromosomes are fused into one. So what, is that, what does that solve? It gives you all the chromosomal material of the primate, but it's now only taking up the space in, in, the, in the combining process of 46. It is 46 chromosomes with 48 chromosomes of genomic material still in there. Now, how could nature do that? How could nature fuse those two chromosomes together in any length of time? It, it wouldn't happen. It couldn't happen. That was done. According to Sitchin, we were created genetically by the Anunnaki as a worker to mine gold for them, to serve them. People out there, even if you're not a scholar, even if you're not anything, if you open your eyes a little bit to this and you start just doing your own research, you're going to find paths there that lead you to some things that are going to awaken new ideas into you. In the next few years, I think we're going to see a watershed of information uh, that is going to absolutely rewrite 
every book of history. There is evidence left over this entire planet when you start thinking, and you must believe, that we are the offspring of these people. If there was a God, the God created those people before they created us. We are here because of an act of divine creation, but they were people just like us, only older, only more technically advanced. We need to rediscover that in ourselves, that we are a great civilization. We came from a great civilization. And I would tell anybody to, to look, open your eyes and look for it. Don't be blinded to something that's uh, uh, led to nothing but uh, the slaughter of ourselves for thousands of years. And we still are at that point. We're still a war in society. When this documentary or others like it uh, are put out there and enough people will see it, at least that will start a beacon somewhere that will start shining a little bit brighter. And so at some point, we're going to see that we have a different history than what we've been given. The proof's there. Our true history may be indeed very different than what we've been taught through the ages. Whether this data has been withheld or our identities have just been forgotten, it is our responsibility now to rediscover who we are and where we're going.